welcome back to part two of Running with Thrones special edition of Gotta Run with Will. And in this part, we are going to discuss uh, potential theories. I'd like to start off uh, by thinking who will actually end up sitting in the Iron Throne in the end. My take is that it's probably be between Danny and John if they survive. But I don't know how it's going to play between the romance. Now they have something to discover pretty soon that they're actually related, which was kind of creepy. It wasn't as creepy as the beginning when we learned about Cersei and Jaime. It was still incest, but it wasn't as creepy because I think that we were all cheering for them to actually uh, get together. Uh, mm. But uh, I think it'll be between them uh, and uh, ultimately... I would love to see Danny uh, sitting on the Iron Throne. I think that uh, I see her definitely stronger than John, definitely wiser. John, I think that, that got us all disappointed uh, when uh, he came out and, and told Cersei that uh, he won't be kneeling because uh, he already uh, sworn allegiance to, to Danny. We were like, dude, what? That's, that's politics. Uh, what about you? I believe John, I mean, he is the rightful heir to the throne now that we know that he is uh, Aegon Targaryen. So I, I think John. John's your Even though I John's agree your with your, uh, you know, um, prediction of Danny, um, I think she's going to have to bend the knee to him. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Peter? Well, since all, the, all arrows are pointing in that direction, I still, for the, the character-wise, I, I love John. I love Mother of the Dragons a lot. It can be either one of them. It depends on how they're able to come out of the situation they're in and understanding who they are and what roles they have to play going forward and see how many ways they can compromise for the better of the people who they're going to be, who will be, they'll be serving. So it's really it's it's a really challenge to say whether it's John or Danny. I like Danny because of how strong she is, and when she says something, she means that she stands. John have that way of how he speaks to people and he talks to them, and convince them, and shows that leadership. They both show great leadership qualities in how they deal with stuff, how they handle stuff, and how they put people ahead of themselves. Yes. So I think it'll be either way. It, it's. Uh, it's really, for me, it's a toss-up between the two. It's a tough pick. Yeah, and it's a, it's a tough pick because they both, they both care. Mm -hmm. Well, who knows? It might wind up being Cersei in the end. No, Cersei, I think Cersei has a lot of stuff coming for her. So unless the, the mountain can pr could stop her, could protect her all this time, I think it would be pretty much, uh, I think it would be pretty challenging. If it's somebody from the world of the living, on the Iron Throne. <laughs> mm. um, nice. I, nice. I would like to see it be John simply because I think that he has always done what he thinks is truly right and what is noble and what is best for the people. Very much that Ned Stark quality. And I feel yes. like Ned was loyal to the very, very end and it was loyalty that killed him essentially. Because of that, I would love to see somebody as humble um, and as one of the people having grown up as a bastard, as an outcast, be on the throne. And I think that with the right... Um, hand and the right counsel, he'd be a very great leader. There's also a part of me that wants to kind of see humanity die because I think this is a lesson to the world right now that if we cannot work together, we all go down together. Okay. So I think in some weird, um, totally morbid way, it'd be kind of cool to have like the Night King like on the Iron Throne and it just be a world of zombies and just have it be kind of a lesson that if we're so divided and so self-absorbed in our own power, in the big picture, we all go down. So those are my two takes on it. I feel like I feel like it's probably going to be a Targaryen of some kind, but I would not throw out the other idea. I don't know. I like your I like your <laughs> point of view, actually. Uh, you know, maybe the Night King or something interesting and scary. Because, uh, yeah, I think that uh, at the end of the day, they all had it coming and that's what the, the children of the forest were trying to achieve when they created yeah. uh, the first uh, walker. 
Yeah, that's that's a great point. Uh, yeah, interesting. And actually, Peter, you mentioned the mountain, right? So that brings up a very interesting topic, which mm -hmm. is uh, I think what we're all waiting to see the famous uh, game ball and let's get ready to rumble thing between the two brothers, the hound and uh, the mountain. It's not how it ends for you, brother. You know who's coming for you. Definitely. Um, but speaking of the dead, I mean, he is a dead man that, you know, was <laughs> brought back to life. Yeah. You know, and it's... It's, I, a, it's a different kind of... Uh, I, I don't think he's a... Uh, he, yeah, he's a zombie, but, uh, but his yeah, his, uh, way, uh, we think he's dead. Yeah, the way the hound said it's like you're even uglier than the way you left <laughs> yes. me. Like whatever they did to you, it's like what is he? Yes, yeah. It's like sewn back together. Was it in the mountain? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to see that fight? I think they already initiated that fight when they met, and he walked closer, and he's like, hmm. Yes, he chat with him. I think you're going to see that. And I think they both will go down. You think Sir Gregor recognizes uh, his brother oh, and yeah, at does. his current dead state? Yeah, he, he definitely, he, he, he does. He does. Because Interesting. Because the mountain has a mind of his own also. Even though he's dead and is brought back, he can think because he does move on command. He's very instinctive in what's going on. Hmm. You want to kill me now? Shh. He already oh pulled that sword. That part so, was scary. So again, intuitive, instinctive. So he he feels what Cersei is what Cersei is feeling at the same time, and he's there because he was created to protect her. Yeah. yeah. So the fight will probably be not it's isolated. I think it'll be a, a part of where. A collective uh, parties are fighting, and they like, ah, oh, brother, okay. Interesting. Okay, let's put you back permanently. <laughs> Interesting. What about you? It's a conflict that probably we're going to have to see some sort of resolution or some sort of, you know, um, it has to come to a head. Um, I really loved in this season how um, the Hound has become more human, more relatable, more um, vulnerable, um, less of just a killing machine. Yes. And I think that is what separates him from his brother. I don't think he, I don't think the mountain can think for himself. I think he's almost like Cersei's puppet at this point in time. That's my take on it. Um, so I don't know if he recognizes his brother, or even remembers anything. I just mm -hmm. see him almost like as a Frankenstein type thing. Yeah. Um, that being said, we also haven't seen it's kind of a mystery, really. They haven't given much away. Um, if they've fought, I would obviously love to see the Hound win. I'd love him to kill him with fire because I think that's yeah. exactly. the sweet revenge. But, I mean, it's also Game of Thrones. I'm also kind of over them not killing off main characters and just having those really close calls. Because, again, another thing that made the show really great a couple of seasons ago, and now it's kind of like you know they're not going to kill off I mean, they weren't going to kill off Jamie and Braun with the dragon, right? Like, that was one of those things. They left it at that. Well, but they should have killed them I in got that scared. Situation. I got to tell they, you. Right. Because they yeah. should have. Yeah. Two seasons ago, they would have been gone. Yes. But I think they're kind of, you know, they're kind of falling into that regular TV mode, which is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how it would go with the, that's right. the brothers doing. That's, that's a but, great point, because actually there's been a, a lot of uh, close calls with uh, favorite characters. You're not dying today, Sir Jorah. Drink this. What is it? Rum. Drink it all, please. I'm afraid this is going to hurt. If you wouldn't mind, bite down hard. I'm sorry, but no one knows I'm here, and if they hear you screaming, then we both finish. Have you ever done this before? No. 
like uh, Sir Jorah coming back from oh this uh, deadly disease uh, cured yeah. that was cured yeah. by Sam. Sam. Uh, and the water, like the ice water or whatever, like pulling uh, him in. Yes. yes. And he uh, somehow survives it. And it's a painful treatment, but you're right. I mean, that, you know, I think that, uh, I don't know, most people, at least that this is the way I see it, uh, most people like Sir, Sir Jorah and uh, you know, we we all regret that he's so deep into the friend zone with uh, with Danny, uh, having to witness uh, her new romance with uh, with John. But uh, his return, I think that we we were all like, yeah. I was yeah. so happy when like you know, right? Samuel cured him. Yeah, but I also think too their inability this season to kill off a lot of main characters has made those moments like Sam saving Chidora, um or like John coming back from the dead. Like they've made them slightly less special because it seems almost like now our favorite characters are invincible because the writers have kind of given us that a little bit. Where it's like, it would have been awful if, if, if Sir Jorah had turned into full stone man, obviously. Um, and it's great he came back, but because like, Jamie almost died and didn't, and Ron almost died and didn't, and like, you know, <laughs> the odds are good that a bunch of oh, other characters, yeah. yeah, like almost died but didn't, it makes it almost a little bit less special when those magic moments occur i don't know so i don't know how they'll handle that if the brawl happens with those two brothers um i feel like it could really go either way just because the writers have been a little bit but to your point yeah. i mean he is a dead man walking <laughs> so he maybe can only be killed with fire so remember when they cut off the hand of the white john explains the threat of the army of the dead with kyburn its love at first sight cersei's hand uh, came and grabbed it and kind of like he was, you know, mesmerized by it. Kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, can I create this too? You know, so maybe it is fire and it's like that whole thing where the hound is going to overcome his fear of fire and he's going to have to use fire to kill him. Well, that's interesting. That's that's very interesting. And um, let's talk about another theory. Uh, do you think that we have a new baby coming, uh, not on Cersei's side, but on Danny's side? Uh, do you think that's happening? Because uh, uh, we know what she said. At the dragon pit, Danny tells John that Miri Mazdur said that Danny can't have children, and John suggests that Miri might have been wrong. So, like, uh, John's saying, like, really? Hold my beer. Uh, so, uh, what do you guys think? Well, her being the mother of dragon, and I think they were just trying to play this where you saw how John had the bone of a baby dragon, and, you know, she, she kind of, like, he hands it to her. Yes. And then, you know, she gives it back to him. It's sort of like, okay, this is going to be our child. And, you know, him telling her, how can you trust this witch to tell you, you know, why, why was she right? You know, it's like, you probably can't have a baby. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're... Together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his nephew and an aunt. Yeah, I think yeah. Of, it comes down to energy. And I'm a big believer in energy and, and, and chemistry because of how they have come together. So... You know, when two people come together, you know, miracles can happen. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that she's uh, getting ready to be a mom and John is a dad. And that, again, that changes how the writers, are, how the viewers are going to see or feel with the show when, if that happens. So mm -hmm. there's a possibility of that happening because chemistry can change everything and how they care for each other. and understand they respect each other and care for each other because, again, it's about a common goal. Even though to be on the throne is one thing, but to serve and, you know, end this madness. And that's basically yes. what you're looking for. And the madness is coming from the North, which is the, the White Walkers. And so far, they have the, the dragon, the dragon stone, so to, to help with that. Yeah, well, you're right. What do you think? I think the writers have made it very, very obvious with a thousand hints in the last episode or two that, yeah, they're going to have a baby. Like, I think there were so many, so many, so many, so many obvious little innu innuendos and hints um, and things said and, and discussions made um, about offspring um, that, it, that, like, it's happening. Um, you know, <laughs> they're having some weird freak incest baby. But that's also what the Targaryens did for a long time. So, that's right. you know. Mm -hmm. They're just doing what their ancestors did. They're keeping the did. family tradition um, alive. So I think, to me, there's no question that this is what's happening. Um, but even before, when Tyrion was talking to her, trying to figure out, like, you know, who's going to be your successor, it's right. like, you can't have a child. And, uh, and her is like, you know, we'll worry about that later. But then another thing that sort of 
when Tyrion went to talk to Cersei about, you know, coming back and fighting and helping the North, he left and they, they never showed what did he agree to with her. You know, he figured out you're pregnant. Did he promise her something? Hmm. Yeah, we, we don't know. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Interesting. That's a good one. Let me ask you this. Uh, I think that we can all agree that one of the biggest uh, conspiracy theories around uh, the show is uh, who's the Night King and uh, what's going to happen with the Night King, which you brought a very interesting <laughs> point, uh, very out of the box, uh, but I like it. Uh, so do you guys think that Bran is actually related? You know that in the last, in the last few seasons, even the, the makeup of uh, the Night King has changed uh, and to resemble more like a brand-ish character. Do you think that they are actually related now? And I'm asking you this because as a hint, or what I think it's a hint from the writers, a uh, couple of times uh, when uh, Bran was connected to uh, a flock of ravens, The Night King was actually looking at him and then it shut him down. And a couple of things that they made connect to each other uh, made me think that they might be, if not the same character, they're somehow connected to uh, an unknown uh, end or purpose. Uh, what do you guys think? I don't know. Um, I mean, just thinking about that cave when John was trying to go and mine the dragon, dragon glass. glass. Um, and there were like all the paint, all the, you know, carvings mm -hmm. of the humans. So the Night King comes from like way, way, way back. So I don't think there's a, I mean, there's some sort of relation with Bran and maybe since the time that he held him and kind of like touched him and saw him. But I don't think that Bran is the Night King. I think what, what you're talking about in terms of how he, how they both can see the same thing, is when Bran is fleeing from them, and when he came back out and the night came touch him because they, he was in, he was dreaming, and all of a sudden he got touched, so that touch alone was a burn. It's like wow, so it's like someone hacking into a software. Yeah. So Bran got hacked. Maybe he was a three-eyed raven when he was alive. So he got hacked. So yes, he can see everything. And I think the Night King can see some of it, not everything. Because again, Bran has already seen everything that's happened. He already understands what's going to happen already. Almost everything. Uh, <laughs> he never seen coming uh, John and Danny uh, pairing up. Because otherwise he would have prevented that, saying, no, wait, wait a minute, guys. So you guys are related. I think, no, I think he, he did. He did see that, but he could not stop it in time. Uh, okay. Yeah, because remember, he saw everything. Yeah. He could not stop it in time. So Maybe he, he also doesn't want to stop it. Maybe if he sees everything, he actually sees what that child or what happens. I mean, again, we think of it as weird and gross also, and incestual, but like if this is something that's like somewhat it. normal back then, you know, yeah. maybe it's something, again, when you can see all, you have to let things then play out the way that you know they're going to. I like that. Yes. So. I like that. No, 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 she, yeah. no, she, um, no, she, no, she, she I think she, she is, it's a valid point because you cannot, if you see everything, you cannot just say, oh, no, don't cross the street or don't do that. So he's letting everything play it out, let the cards, or let, let the sticks fall away the may or the dice fall away and let everything play out. If it's, if it's a way that's going to be destructive in a way, then he's probably going to press, step on the brakes and alert them. I think right now he's just letting everything play out. And again, with him and the, the Night King, the Night King does see, but not everything. The Night King uses Viserion to take down the wall supports the idea that the lake scene last episode was a trap to take Danny's dragons, because otherwise the Night King was marching on Eastwatch with no apparent plan to pass the wall. So maybe the Night King, like Bran, is some kind of green seer who can have visions of the future and past. His power must be limited. He'd win all the time if he knew everything, but this definitely makes the Night King even more dangerous and see what the dragon did to the wall. And that was something that no one, I don't think uh, uh, Danny or John or anybody knows as yet, because that's going to be very intense. So the only way to bring that, that dragon down is using the dragon glass. 
What do you guys think is going to happen with Viserion now that he's an ice dragon instead of a fire-breathing dragon? Viserion breathes blue fire on the icy wall, and it starts to crack. The wall has stood for some 8,000 years. Built by the first men, children, and giants to protect the living from the dead, it's one of the hinges of the world. In book one, John thinks if the wall falls, the world falls with it. And now, the wall falls. There is nothing between the army of the dead and Westeros. Do you think that that the Night King is going to be using his ultimate weapon against uh, Winterfell? Who's next? Winterfell? Everyone. uh, Everybody? (laughs) Uh, What do you think? I think it's... Not knowing exactly how he operates or what his strategy is or why, I I think it's hard to say where he's going to target with with his with most force obviously winterfell is the closest um yes. but also too now in the current game of thrones scenario you can take a dragon very quickly from one place yes. to another um thanks season seven so you know <laughs> so now in theory this dragon could be like in king's landing like in a blink like a of an eye jet. right so you know if we're going with logic and like mm. place like yeah winterfell would make the most sense like they're in trouble but I also think maybe that, that he's going to go right to the this, this seat of power. He's going to, you know, fight one dragon with the other dragon. I'm not... Oh, you know, a dragon showdown. Yeah, I mean, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, I also think, though, too, that there's a chance that the Night King... The whole scenario with um, the crew of the living being surrounded by the dead and waiting for Danny to come... I'm going to guess that that was something that was almost a trap for the dragon. I think that there's something that, again, as Bran can kind of see things, I think that to some level he also can see or sense things. Again, to what capacity, I don't know. Yeah. Yet. But um, but I think there's some definitely some strategy on his end, that he's not just robotic. So I think it's going to come into play now how he strategizes versus how the living strategize and do the, the living strategize together. And that's going to kind of be the, you know, what the motives are. For him, he has nothing to lose, right? He doesn't have necessarily, like, loved ones or family or, you know, his dead or we can assume he has no real, like, affections or relations for. Humans, obviously, are a bit more complicated than that. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I don't know. I think there are a lot of variables there where it's just, you know, the writers could go in a bunch of different directions. Yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> I think you have an army, you have a dragon, you're taking everything that's in your path. And that's what basically he's going because no one, I think what was surprising for me, I'm watching this one and I see everybody just marching towards that and all of a sudden it's like, where is he? Because I know the, the end of the other episode, you see when he touched the dragon and it came alive and he's like, when all of a sudden you see this, Whoa, and I think that just like, I'm sure everyone was home and the viewers were like, oh my word, this is not happening. And then he flew in and then take the wall down. I think that, that, was, that, was, that was huge. For me, they were like, oh boy, game's on. <laughs> yes. Game's on. So not only am I coming with my dead army, I'm coming with something that is also just as much powerful as anything you guys have also. So the war has begun. Definitely begun. Yeah. No, no, there's no, there's no question about that. The war has begun because he has something very powerful in the air and you see what destructive force he can do to a wall that has been there for a long time that just crumbled with that bread. Interesting. Well, the humans better hope that Cersei doesn't try to kill Danny's dragons because the living are going to need living dragons to fight and Cersei, you know, she has the weapons too. And she's been, achieve, yeah, uh, she's been thinking about crafting that. So, that, you know, that, if, if, if the, our two remaining good human dragons um, go down, humanity's screwed. <laughs> yes. I think it's going to be Cersei, then the dragons. But we'll see what Jaime decides when he gets to, uh, to Winterfell. We'll see. We only have two years to go. So <laughs> wow. we'll know in two years. <laughs> That's a killer. Well, Thank you very much uh, for your time. I really enjoyed this conversation, especially uh, learning about uh, you guys' theories. Uh, Very interesting points of view. Um, So that concludes part two of Running With Thrones, a special edition of uh, Gotta Run With Will. 
and thank you very much. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm serious about who do you go, who, who do you attack first? You see Jimmy riding off. We already understand he's going to Winterfell. So he's definitely, I don't know who this woman yeah. is or who I've been hanging out with, but she's definitely another woman. Well, now I don't want Jamie to die now that, that he finally...